welcome to Recall <laughs> Midwife. <laughs> uh, today we are doing series three, episode five. I'm Alex. I'm Becky. I'm Jen. And uh, just a reminder that this week's episode deals with physical and mental disability, infant mortality, alcoholism, drug addiction. And so if those are topics that ones you would prefer to skip this time, we understand and hope you join us for the next one. In today's episode, Jenny Lee remains at the mother house following Alex's death, leaving the nuns and midwives shorthanded. On top of this, Sister Julienne is busy making preparations for Sister Evangelina's upcoming Jubilee celebrations. This all takes its toll on Sister Julienne and she faints, leading Dr. Turner to prescribe bed rest. Sheila steps into the breach and the first thing she does is to engage a new midwife to join the order from the London. Patience Mount returns. She has moved into midwifery after meeting Jenny Lee last year while she was on a rotation at the London on men's surgical. Sister Winifred and the midwives take charge of Sister Evangelina's Jubilee celebrations and Sister Winifred writes to her surviving brother Vincent, hoping that he can come. Cynthia is collecting the donations on behalf of the Girls' Brigade for a dance at St Gideon's. There is much excitement at St Gideon's for the upcoming dance. Mrs Harper is visiting her daughter Sally, who has Down syndrome and is a resident there. When she arrives, she discovers that Sally is unwell and suspects that Sally is pregnant. She marches her straight to an artist's house where the midwives confirm her worst fears. Sally has a boyfriend at St Gideon's, Jacob. The baby is born prematurely and doesn't survive. Sally eventually returns to St Gideon's, but is separated from Jacob, who is transferred to an all-male institution in Scotland. Meanwhile, Fred helps Tom Harrowwood move into his lodgings in Poplar. Oh, there's a lot going on today. So Girls. much. So much. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, where do you think we should begin? Um, oh, it's, well, it's just so much. Do we do Sally first? Or do we talk yeah, about, let's talk Julianne, about or? Sally first? Yeah, let's talk about, well, it all merges in, but Sally. Um, I will say that whenever anyone was at St. Gideon's, no one asked after Jane or how she was getting on. <laughs> <laughs> the torch burns brightly for jane it really does it really does to be fair, it does with all of us. jane jane is now with uh reverend appleby thornton so you know maybe... well that's what we think but we've yeah. never had it confirmed oh i know i know well, we just have to assume the best for for one of our favorites like jane. well all i'm gonna say about some gideons is who thought a pink cardigan with some bead detail would cause such a stir <laughs> oh my goodness yeah so scary he's old I... cardy yeah, I loved I loved how they styled her with the with that bright pink dress and then the really hot pink of the or red or whatever of that sweater. And that sweater was so cute. And then she had red hair too, and it was just like all kind of went together in this. Really Can we just talk about the actress who played Sally? She was brilliant. Yeah. Um, but she's actually stars in a comedy over here. She's actually one of the first the main characters. Um, it's called Ralph and Katie about a couple who get married. Oh, um, and it's a sitcom over here, and it's it's quite new. Um, it's really good. Um, but and, she stars in that, and she's brilliant in that, so she can do comedy as well as uh, you know, good acting as well. Yeah. So in, in the, just as a quick side note, in the show that she's in, Sally and the other one that you just Ralph. mentioned is yeah. are her is Ralph also a gentleman with Down, Down syndrome? syndrome? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. so they have, but they have an independent life, kind of, and live. Yeah, yeah, they get together. married. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I have to say this. This storyline with Sally and her pregnancy and everything um, made me feel very conflicted. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. There, I mean, there was a lot about it that just made me think, oh, like I just I just felt like I was being torn in, in multiple different directions, really at each point as they were kind of developing the story and everything um yeah. oh man it was it this one really had me, this one really had me thinking so well just to to so basically sally lives at st gideon's mm -hmm. um and she's 30 and she doesn't live with the parents because obviously basically she's got down syndrome and st gideon's is where jane grew up but it's a place where it's like a care home isn't it really yeah yeah um, for so anyone for who people, can't live independently for whatever yeah. reason um, and they put, she was like, oh, I didn't want her to go, but we put her there because we, you know, we, we didn't think she was safe on the street. And now she's not safe here because obviously she was pregnant, um, which uh, mm -hmm. no one, no one in the show had seen before. And it was just this big drama. It was horrible. Mm. Um, and a mum, oh, a mum's acting with it as well. And oh, it was, there was a lot to unpack for this whole thing. Cause obviously you can, you are conflicted because she's 30, but at the same time, you know, there is the laws, there is laws to protect people. Mm -hmm. It's all very, 
<laughs> well, and, and just to give context, because this was a question I had, and I actually chatted with my mom about it, who watched the episode with me, was I was like, okay, she's a woman with Down syndrome, but what age mentally, developmentally, do we think that she is at? And it, though it wasn't ever explicitly said, we had kind of come up with that she was between like maybe like six and eight years old developmentally. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, too, even though she is 30 years old, you know, really too young to understand a lot about certain parts of adults' yeah. activities and experiences, shall we say. Um, but then when her mom discovers she's six months pregnant, all of a sudden it's like, you know, we've got to, we've got to care for her. We've got to figure out how to kind of make this an okay experience for her. Um, and, um, and not just that, but, and this was something I hadn't really thought about, but there was a lot of discussion in the episode about the fact that, that, that medically they do not know if her baby is going to be, um, you know, uh, a able to survive, you know, once it's born and everything, which was something I hadn't really thought about myself yeah, until they kind of started talking, talking about, about hips that. and that kind of thing as well mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um oh it was just really sad and also sad. like her acting about because obviously her mum was really just to the, her mum and dad basically got her out of some gideons and brought her home yeah, yeah. And she was absolutely miserable and she was like i want to go home and um it was just oh it was really well acted but the mum as well the mum's conflict <sighs> and upset and the dad's conflict and upset he was a bit more combative <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah combative where's that come from um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was just this really emotional emotive storyline i well, also loved miss molyneux and when jacob so because so jacob's got additional responsibilities there so he's got the same access as kind of any of the kind of nurses and orderlies mm -hmm. um so he is moved to an institution in scotland because he's got family near there um but off I when know them no, but when he has to leave and Miss Molyneux reaches out and just takes his hand. I oh, know. I do oh. actually have a weird note here on Mrs. Molyneux. Not not to not to make light or, you know, query the the right script writers or anything, right? But Miss Molyneux, right at the very end, was like, Oh, you know, make yourself useful, get me a cup of tea, right? Mm -hmm. But when Jacob is with Trixie, he's like, I need help. Did he actually need help? Or was he like just wanting to get um, Trixie to serve it to him <laughs> because if he can bloody make a cup of tea and carry it over to Miss Molyneux he can have it oh that's a good question actually yeah I, I actually think that I actually think that maybe that was a bit of of writing that kind of fell through the thing because well because he said in the when... end that was wonderful because I wondered if it was that he fancied Trixie no, yeah it's, no it's just a bit now no, that you've said that well, let's let's just rewind because we kind of jumped ahead. So, <laughs> so at the at the outset when they discover that Sally is pregnant, it's kind of like, how did she get this way? Like, how are we even here at this point? Yeah, because they don't know and, about Jacob and her going out at this point, <laughs> right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, and she says, you know, like, oh, it did. Like, I what, you know, nothing bad happened to me. Like, I have a boyfriend. She tells Cynthia that in confidence. And she also so, said it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. Like, I it know. Didn't hurt. And Cynthia, yeah. oh, can I just say, by the way, Cynthia was amazing with her. She was like, you're not a silly girl. I think you know. Like, she was so patient and kind and amazing. Like, just mm -hmm. as you'd expect Cynthia to be. Like, oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. it, it totally made sense that her and Chummy ran point on this whole yes. care situation from start to finish because they were so compassionate. Um, but, you know, so it's kind of like, okay, well, so, you know, now, so we find out that Sally was not the victim of, you know something she you know you know she got this way through a as best possible it was consensual you yeah. know, situation um and then uh you know some blah 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 jacob finds out that sally is at home he goes there to to see her the and truth comes, and in the, marriage the, the yeah the truth comes out that jacob and sally are in a relationship that's the boyfriend sally was referring to and you know jacob wants to marry her i mean it, it to me it was more of an an honor honorific um uh, you know request i mean no one really was expecting that that was going to happen because of the oh bless him for doing it though and getting the bus all the yeah. way to poplar well and i and i i was really heartbroken because when he stood there and the mom was very upset and the girl the cynthia and chummy were luckily in there at the same time and they kind of you know mo modulated mo sorry moderated the whole situation but um jacob says he's like you know sally sees me in a way that no one else sees me she sees a part of me that you know is hidden you know and which is kind of like um the part of me that's a completely normal 
man, you know, like a, a, just a man, like any other man. And that's how I took it anyway. And it really, really got me, but, but we have to remember that Jacob, he has cerebral palsy, but there's nothing developmentally no. delayed about him. I mean, he is, he's, and he does genuinely care about it. Cause he does say like, if she is loved, I can go on living. And I was like, oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, it was really sweet, really tender. And, um, you know, but, um, oh, the scene when she went to she went to clinic as well, which I thought was a bit weird of them to send her to clinic because I just thought she's already like in a vulnerable situation here, and then they like make her turn up to clinic to see the doctor and all the other mums in Poplar are looking. Like I just thought, yeah. you know what, you, you can do you can do home visits. You could have done home, home visits. Visit. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. But um, uh, but then she gives birth and it's early, and they're in Compton. Yes. By the way, when they were in Compton, did you see a load of extra nuns? Randoms, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I missed it, but yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. I was oh, like, if they're so busy, get the extra nuns out doing deliveries. Exactly. Uh, so anyway, um, so then there's the birth scene, and it's Chummy and uh, and Cynthia, and that birth scene was one of the most harrowing things I've seen on call. And that is, let's be honest, girls, every week's harrowing on uh, Call the Midwife. Uh, so uh, it was absolutely awful. Poor, such again, amazing acting by this actress. She was so good. Yeah. Um, and when she was there and she was just all upset and confused and Chummy was trying to speak to her and I was just willing the mum I was just like go in, go in, go into it go into it, there's nothing you'd want to see less than your child being in pain but at the same time there's nothing you'd want less than your child having you there with them and I was yeah. just like go in, go in, go in like everything in my body willing that mum to go in and she did and I cheered <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like an absolute nutter Cause I mean, I, for me, the for me, the tears were just flowing at this point. I mean, I you know, like this was a big crying episode, but oh, oh yeah. god, yeah. But well, yes, as I, I say, I've been there. Swimming. I won't be at the sharp end. You know me. I'm very, very squeamish. Um, oh. but yeah. And then obviously the baby's born, and it's too small. And Chummy, you, you you know, they don't show you anything graphic on here, but obviously they show you no. Chummy's face and Cynthia's face with a with a, with a not a nod. What's the opposite? Shake, shake the head. Yeah. Thank you. A head shake. Yeah. Well mm-hmm. done. <laughs> <sighs> um so uh, so yeah so they did that and they handled it very sensitively and they said and, and she was like why is the baby not crying and and Cynthia very very like trying to describe it but she was just like uh, the baby was very small the baby was too small mm. and Sally was all upset and it was just oh heartbreaking and her mum was with but, her but she was she was upset and that is genuine but at the same time you could tell she wasn't really connecting all the dots in her own mind it what like like we've yeah. seen other women have to give up their baby or lose yeah. their baby or have an and their, their, stop, baby. their stopping was primal and, and and they understand what that yeah. separation is what that loss is sally was not getting that like even while she was giving birth she was like can this be over i just want to go home i don't want a baby i'm not i don't want to yeah. do any of this like you can tell like that's really where the deve- developmental you know like issue i think was very well illustrated because you can tell that this is a person who's really not at the level to understand yeah, because up until at. that up until that point, you were totally rooting for Jacob and Sally, but actually, Sally well, wasn't. Yeah, yeah, they're ill-equipped. No. Um, well, but then, in the meantime, Miss Molyneux's telling Jacob that he's got to go to Ayrshire, which she's spoken about. He's got family there. Never met his family there. Um, yeah. But it's, he's going to a boy's, uh, St Mungo's, it was called. So he's going yeah. to another home, but in Ayrshire, which is a bloody long distance. That's about you know what? Say, eight hours, off- nine hours in the car. Well, more because what would I didn't when he drove off I was like it's gonna take him hours to get there it's oh, not yeah. really a cool ride oh yeah it's 1950s I'm thinking nowadays <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. but also they could have bloody timed it better she's like oh you'll be back for lunch and there he is out the back window it's like go after breakfast take him to air show you know she's coming around lunch I, I think they could have given them a more considerate goodbye well did you I was about to ask you this so did you see the scene at, with the cardigan at the end oh i saw this yes i saw the scene where he went he where he gave where he wrapped the cardigan for her and then yeah. gave her a note with the cardigan that said you know with love from jacob yes i did see yeah. yeah i just didn't know if that was like a deleted scene or something but that was kind of had to wrap it up a bit yeah um, but yeah, yeah i think they wanted to just show how upsetting it was they just basically yeah. wanted to keep me crying yeah oh and me too oh my goodness this show is keeping the tissue industry in business because <laughs> oh my lord it just really had me going also, and actually I just... oh, go ahead sorry go ahead well, one thing that did make me laugh from this storyline, which there wasn't a lot of it, was the police interview bit. So when, uh, not the actual police interview, so obviously it was a, a situation where the police had to be involved because it was a vulnerable uh, adult and, um, well, two vulnerable ones in the, in the, in the, you know, in the actual end. But mm-hmm. um, 
But obviously they didn't know who the father was and she was keeping quiet. So Peter had to come to um, speak to Sally. Um, mm-hmm. But he wanted to take a midwife with him because obviously language and that obviously, kind of stuff, trusted yeah. relationship and all that. Um, so he comes in to get, uh, so he comes to Nata's house to collect a midwife. He's like, can, can I bring a midwife over? And Sister Evangelina's having a massive to-do in the kitchen about the lemon meringue that went missing. Oh, yeah. And she's like, uh, who sent for you? It was lemon meringue, not the crown jewels. It just made me absolutely lull. I just thought, oh. Yeah. That was Sister Evangelina at her peak. Well, and that storyline is like woven so delicately and beautifully through this story because when she said that to him, I did not I did not get what was really happening there. And then it was later at you know, much, much later in the episode that I all of those pieces fell into place and I was like, Oh my goodness, here we go. But just to wrap up before we move on to that, I will say I I liked that, you know, so we met Tom Harrowood before. He's back this episode, but they actually gave him like a small but meaningful job to do where he was the one that told Jacob that the baby didn't make it. And he did it in such a sweet and compassionate way. And I thought it was actually quite nice too, that it was kind of a man to man type of a thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So yeah. Yeah. But also there was a scene where Chummy, not Chummy, Trixie, what is going on with me today? I'm tired. Trixie. Uh, was obviously with uh, with Jacob, and they, she was like, oh, "Would you be a darling and and butter the scones?" Me and uh, Jacob have not finished mm-hmm. our tea, and he, mm-hmm. she, you could see a bit of glimpse from him, like, "Oh, she's a very kind, compassionate, caring girl." This there was a, there was a twinkle in that eye. There yeah. was. Mm-hmm. He yeah. loves a woman devoted to service. He really does. Also, can we talk about really quickly about the uh, Gideon's party? It looked ace. They're like a mirror ball and everything. Yeah, I love like good... I love the bit where Miss Molyneux is um asked Jacob to put on a slow song just to calm everybody down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's what I did. Do you remember the so we had a I had a birthday party for my daughter last uh, last June and uh Bex, you were there and uh, yeah. and yeah, we had to do a bit some calm ones towards the end because they all got a bit too excited. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, but all there was a the bit, cake bit and with everything. Cheryl in the girls' brigade, one of my quiet ones. And um, but she was like, uh, I feel sorry for them to uh to I Cynthia them, and Cynthia yeah. was like do you know something Cheryl I don't and I was like oh I love you Cynthia you just yeah. ate. wait I okay I'm clearly wrong but I I saw that girl and I thought it was the daughter of the mother that Chummy helped deliver when she was going to go back to I did too I did too it, but she's changed the character girl. completely well it might be the same actress but they've just basically brought her in and changed oh. the character okay because she had a look on her face and I was like oh I wonder if it's that same kind of like sassy like preteen girl that was you know like gonna go work down cable street and all that you know like as a joke as a joke yeah. um and that now she's kind of got this opinion or whatever and Cynthia's um you know divesting her but oh so when Mrs. Torpy sits in with um baby Fred that's that's, yeah, that's the, the lady. Irish one yeah yeah on connection the dots there we go <laughs> there we go Oh, this is this is a small moment, but um, and and I we have to get to our next like big storyline. But um, when they're when all the uh ladies are sitting around in, at at Nadana's house and having lunch, and they have a quiche Lorraine, and they pass it, and, and Sister Evangelina is like, "Oh no, I don't want that." It's like this newfangled thing; they can't believe it. I'm like, "It's a ham and cheese sandwich. That's what a quiche Lorraine is. Like, it's delicious. It's pastry. It's cheese. It's bread. It's an egg. It's it's ham. very poisonous to me being allergic to egg. I put well, here quiche Lorraine lulls. <laughs> oh, I just I was like I couldn't. I was like quiche Lorraine is the most indulgent of all the quiches. Who wouldn't want a quiche anyway? But. I get why no, people wouldn't want, it, I, wouldn't want one. <laughs> oh my no. god! I just like these newfangled foods that, at this point, we all think are just so old-fashioned. It's just I love I love food history, so I just had to say that. But. Can we just do one more thing? If we're just doing little bits, okay. I've written here that Peter and Chummy are sniping with each other. Right? It's the most yeah. relatable scene yet. Yes. <laughs> Because obviously that's that <sighs> is married life. Getting annoyed at each other. You both coming in from work or whatever, and you're like, "Well, you've got a bit. Well, you've got a baby." Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, but then to be fair, when she wakes the baby up, he's about to kick off, which I totally would. If if I'd got the baby to sleep and then he comes in and gets it, I'd be like so angry. But yeah. I suppose from his job, he does understand. Like you know, you do want to kiss him sometimes after the, some of the things you see. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and also, it, I mean, it, like you know, who knows? But it, I mean, Freddie still looked like he was kind of more on the awake side when she picked him up and everything. He was like, oh, you know, he had like his eyes yeah. were kind of like rolling around and everything. So, um, it did make me laugh when I, I. It took me a second, but he apparently made her some dinner, and then he's like, oh, and you're if you're you know you're lucky because there's a chalk ice in the, um, 
That just, mean, that just means like a popsicle, right? Like a chocolate no, popsicle. No, choc ice. It's ice cream covered in chocolate. It's delicious. Oh, okay. I was like, oh. Have you, had a, you know magnums? Yes, yes. A yes, bit yes. like that, but a bit It's like a basic chocolate. magnum. Yeah, but oh, it's like okay. thinner and cheaper and nicer. Oh, without okay. a so, stick, without a stick, it's like you hold it in a pack in the packaging. Oh, okay. So this, so this is a little mini for our for our listeners. So, okay. So a magnum would be like a Dove bar here, and then what you're describing, which is just the square of chocolate, co- square of ice cream covered in chocolate with wrapped rectangle, in paper, actually would be rectangle. <laughs> would be for us like a Klondike bar, basically. So interesting, because I was picturing like just a chocolate popsicle, which I actually think are disgusting. Personally, I mean, no offense to anyone if they love those, but well, I'm offended. When he said when he said chalk ice, I was like, oh, okay, well, that's not very nice, but that actually does sound good uh, to they have. They are over. delicious. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. at I will Klondike say... as we speak. Yeah, Klondike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they are squares. Ours are more rectangular. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, similar thing. I actually went on a big Klondike thing um last summer. Because they have all these different flavors, and uh, anyway, this I won't. I don't need to bore everyone, but just yeah, cl- they're. I would I'm not gonna. Lie. I'm looking at them now. They do look delicious. Chocolate oh ice my god! Vanilla ice cream with a thin the, coat in a chocolate. And the thing is, I'll tell you what the hardest part was. I, I would eat one, and that's the serving. One is all you get, right? Definitely could have polished at least two or three off in one go. Like if well, I, I can had- tell you this for now, Jen. I'm looking at them now. Uh, uh, one of our um chocolate ices is like a half a Klondike. You'd not be into it. I'm not going to lie. How, they're even smaller. How have I missed this? Okay. Well, just something interesting there. Um, right. So we're talking about Sister Julienne. So let's do the whole Nanata stuff. So Sister Julienne fainted at the start. Yes. Can I just say, though, she's like all pained at the start, wasn't she, when she was doing the packages with Cynthia and stuff. Uh, and then when she went to the meal, she like stood up to faint. And I was thinking about this. Do you think they filmed it and she just fainted at the table and they thought, that's not dramatic enough. We need yeah. to stand up and then faint to make it more drama because it was just not, you well, know. Well, I was impressed that Sister Winifred managed to catch her because I am a fainter. I've fainted many times. Same. Um, and my mum once tried to catch me that style. I just like went straight through her arms and was just <laughs> like a sack of potatoes on the floor. Oh my gosh. I've never fainted that I, that I, I don't know. I don't think I've ever fainted, um, but I've been, I've been around other people who faint and it is truly terrible. It is terrible because um, I, when I lived in New York city, I, there, I was on the train one time and this woman fainted, but it was a really packed train. And so she didn't really, she like, just kind of like, just like leaned into other people. And then when people like started to realize like that, that's what happened. It's like having, you know, like just a huge wooden plank of a, per- you know, of a person. I mean, yeah. there's like, oh, oh gosh. I well, mean, she, in the second that lady year, was Jen, okay. And, but... Do you remember this, Bex? <laughs> in the second year, I was, um, I did a course on women's studies at uni. I was doing different stuff, subjects, but they showed a female um, genital. It was mut- female mutual. It was just the most disgusting thing you've ever seen in your life. And I was in a lecture theatre and I fainted really hard onto the floor. Sitting down. Like that, I was sitting down, but I fainted to the right. Like I literally went into the aisle. Oh and no! I cut all my face, like all up the side, and I didn't wake up. And they were all. I literally was stood up with everyone around me in the whole lecture theatre. It was awful and blood everywhere. And I just got my bag and just ran out. I must have looked like an absolute nutter. And I ran out, and I just ran out like towards the bus to go home. And someone we knew was like, "Are you okay?" Like I had blood all down my face. Oh, it was no. awful, Jen. It was awful. Oh, you've got to properly come to after a faint because I fainted, then been super embarrassed, tried to get out of there as quickly fainted as possible, again. and then got in for a second. Yeah. Oh no. Oh. I'm I'm laughing more, but I'm trying to suppress a little bit of my laughter because my coughing is still so bad. Um, but that's that's horrible, but also really funny. But also, um, so anyway, also- the sister um Julianne was prescribed rest, basically. Which yeah, I was thinking that you also would be loving that. <laughs> Yeah, How much should... would you love to be prescribed rest, Alex? Oh, I can't tell you. Honestly, I wanted COVID over Christmas so I could actually, like, not to leave the house. Um, you should have just, like, drawn a, a Sharpie line across one of the test results and then just told everyone. And I've then still you've never had, had, had it. Like, I've never had it. I've never had COVID either. Watch, yeah. watch me actually want to leave the house with something and then I'll get it. Yeah. Uh, had... well, well, I did have COVID at Christmas and it... <laughs> oh, and it sucks. You. Yeah, I know you poor <laughs> thing. You were so ill. I'm jealous. But... I was going to say about Sister Julianne's bedroom because we spoke about this on mm. one of our listeners' specials. But Sister Julianne's bedroom is fancy. I know she's obviously like the top, the top. Yeah, but she's taken a vow of poverty and 
Not I know. But... With fancy bedrooms. There's Sister Evangelina with her shoes that have basically got holes all over them. Oh, those shoes were. I mean, I. Oh gosh, I was and... glad that she. I was okay. So, so Julian, Sister Julian is out. She's at the mother house resting. Sheila comes in to take over. <laughs> Excuse me, and she starts kind of you know setting things to rights. Um, Sister Evangelina has to get up from the table and wash her shoes because someone, she's... and it turns out her, smells like dog poop. And so she, when she's yeah. in the kitchen, yeah, it's it's gross. But, but also, in... it's the fact that she's trampled it all through the house. The I fact know. That when Patsy Mount arrives, she gets a whiff of dog. <laughs> yeah, well, and Pats, Patsy, I like, never, I've got on... a terrible sense of smell. Patsy goes on a cleaning spree like you wouldn't even believe, which is so legendary of her. Because she's just such a she's such a cleaning and nurse legend. Like she's all into bleach. She's always oh, I love her. She's so. She's good. the first person that has actually impressed Sister Evangelina from the outset. I know, hundred yeah, percent. Um, but so Sister Evangelina is cleaning her shoes. Sheila comes in. She's like, no, no, no. We're taking the, the you know your old ones to the cobblers. They're, they're disgusting. You know, find something in the free bin, basically. So she goes and finds a pair of plimsolls, which everyone will know what plimsolls are now that we've had our listener <laughs> special. Um, and then and then she's kind of on her way. But so it's a sister of Angelina's storyline. So the girls are upstairs dancing and like having a nice chat and everything like that, like meeting Patsy, Patsy for the first time and getting to know her. And they can't hear that there's knocking at the door. Well, uh, Sister Winifred had dropped an expository line about the fact that the Jubilee celebration for Sister Evangelina is coming up and that she'd already reached out to family. But I didn't click anything in my head when I heard that to this part of it. But Sister Evangelina is walking down the hallway and she hears the door knocking and she looks around the corner and sees kind of a shape in the glass, you know, of the door. And I thought, oh, this is like a father who's coming to say that his wife is. Yeah, I did. I thought it was a patient in need as uh, well. Sounds like we all thought the same. Well, I must have looked away because I missed this the first time I watched this episode. So I was just completely like, oh, who's stealing all the food? I don't know. Oh, (laughs) yeah. Well, I but but I yeah. So I, I wasn't putting it together. And I thought that Sister Evangelina was just like completely worn out and tired and was just like, listen, like, God, forgive me, but I just cannot deal with one more person today, which. I mean, I raise my hand, same, same, same. I have those days, you know, a good amount. But um, so she walked away and I was like, oh, my goodness. I can't believe that she actually ignored the call of a popular person. Well, come to find out, you know, now there's all these thefts happening and everything. Then Peter Noakes is on his rounds and he sees like a nun figure, like through the shadows or whatever. He follows it. He thinks it's Sister Monica Joan. But no, that's it's, it was Monica Jane. Yeah, and then he go, and then he's like, "Oh my God, Sister Evangelina, what are you doing out here?" I thought, I thought it was Sister Monica Jane, but it's you and everything. She says, "Oh, I'm just here to collect." Like I saw this, and I and it's and it's the pie tin because now there's more food being stolen, and it's kind of this mystery, like who's stealing the food. But we find out that you know, and this is, but then you know, he says like, "What's you know, what's going on?" Well, it's the like, brother sleeping rough, isn't it? But like at the same time, like as a nun and as a in her profession and everything do you not think she would try and like take him in or i don't know i just think it's really weird that she's embarrassed by him to like the other sisters and stuff and not told about him Al, she says that she's like he comes and finds me all the time like every year or two he comes and finds me and i do something i try to help i put him in a rehab i do this i do that why doesn't she tell sister evangelina and the other nuns that's what i don't understand all the all the the silent nuns in Compline. You mean Sister Julian? Yeah. Well, Sister Julian might know, but Sister Julian right. isn't there. I don't know, she's, but... she's been scurrilous about it. She's scurrilous around being like, oh, I know. She's not like, oh, I know who's taking that. Well, but I love the she... fact that, Sorry. I just love the fact. So he's obviously broken in and stolen the lemon meringue pie. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that their first assumption was that Sister Monica Jane had staged a burglary. <laughs> No, I thought that was her, though. I thought that was Sister Evangelina, knowing it would be him, but yeah. trying to put the throw them off the scent. Yeah. But I I genuinely didn't think she knew at that point that it was him. I'd probably have to watch the episode again to kind of get the chronology that they lay it out in, but I I, I definitely... I got point, the vibe she knew it was him. Yeah, at some point she's actively covering up. For, for him because because also remember when sister Winifred is like oh I just found the pie plate like right over there behind the shed or whatever like it wasn't even that far away like someone just ate the pie and then they just left it and then you know no harm done kind of a thing and they, the person never tried to steal anything like 
quote of value you know I mean they were just stealing food and things like that I just I just felt really heartbroken by the scene where Evangelina and Vincent are kind of you know there with Officer Noakes because she's kind of giving the story of like how he's he's been you know an alcoholic for a really really long time like basically his whole adult life he's tried so many times to get sober you know but it can it never really lasts very long and you know and and then and then she says that you know, he was the first baby that she saw being born. And that, it was like, the most once... beautiful scene. It was the most beautiful acting by Pam Ferris. Yeah. And also we found out her, her real name as well. Yeah, she, Enid. Like, I didn't like this life for him. He didn't like this life. He's always been like, why Enid? Why? Yeah. So yeah. I, was just, I was loving that. But his first cry decided it for me. So full of hope. Everything made new. And then he said, you see the good in everything. That's your curse. And she's like, and you don't, that's yours. And I just thought, oh, beautifully oh. written, beautifully, beautifully acted by Pam Ferris. Like, she's outstanding. Oh, um, girls. She could, have, she could have been a midwife without being a nun. Yeah, yeah but, but his was not about the, yeah, that, no, she knew she wanted the religious life and she wanted to deliver. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, And yeah, she, I, she's just she's just one of our, like, like legends of, film and tv i also thought peter was so respectful when um she took him in to show him that it was her brother that was sleeping yeah. um and peter says oh sorry to disturb you sir like i was just like oh mm. i know that was lovely but also so two more sister evangelina things that i loved number one <laughs> well sister winifred telling her about your party letting it slip i just thought <laughs> that was perfect that was perfect i can, I can just imagine doing that myself yeah. Um, and then trying to cover up for it. But also, Sister Evangelina being really acid-tongued at Sheila when she's like, you can't wear those shoes. And she's like, well, you get, you know, even if you're in the religious life, you know, you've still got to wear shoes. And she's like, you gave up your right to talk to me about the religious life. And there was Sheila, like, stood there, like, dumbfounded, didn't really know what to say to that. Well, she she says, she's like, oh, I took a bow of poverty, or don't you remember that? You know? Yeah. Like, she was yeah. so... And she, she dug Sheila, like, a couple of times on that front in she this did, episode. But- she made they it found, at the end. Yeah, then there was the beautiful... at the end. Oh, yeah, on the bench. Yeah. Oh, and she took Sheila to the side and she was like, you know, Sister Julianne's told me about your troubles. And then. Um, oh, and she, she I didn't get this scene. Oh, Jen, it was beautiful. So basically, oh, it was they sat on the bench and obviously Sister Evangelina's been a bit of a bitch to Sheila this whole time. <laughs> All the way through it. But then this, it rounds it off nicely because at the end they kind of find peace with each Because obviously Sister oh. Evangelina was probably a bit hurt that she'd left the order. That's oh, where it's really? coming. Um, so yeah, Alex, I interrupted you. So she's just like, um, she's told me all about it, and she was like, "There's so much love in this world." Because she's like, you know, she's got I've got so much love for Timothy, but I feel like it's smothering him. I've got too much, and she was like, "There's so much love. It's, there's, you know, this you you'll find what to do with the other love. Love, just bide your time. God will show you His plan. Mark my words." And it was just so tender and so lovely and so reassuring. Oh. Basically, saying just you know. It, but God will make His plan known to you. Like, don't worry. You know, you've, you you you're a great mum. You've got a son. You've got Timothy. And she said about yeah. when he was born because this is the scene before um, it went to the Jubilee, showing that um, Timothy was, you know, uh, uh, delivered by sister, delivered him, yeah, mm-hmm. sister Evangelina. But she's like, I was with, I get, I obviously delivered, um, and his mum said, I, you know, I want you to be loved forever, kind of thing, and you, and you are loving him forever, and it was just such a lovely, lovely, lovely scene. Oh, yeah. Well, we and we don't talk about kind of the the really strong faith element of the show very much, but that to me is a beautiful way to give someone reassurance, you know, with a, with a a, a faith. Um, a, oh god what's the word I'm like with, with like with like a, a a connection to the faith that they have without you know yeah. like that to me is a way to express a faithful attitude and a faithful support without kind of um doing you know the thing that preaching without preaching and without just saying like oh don't worry about it you know it'll all be fine god will take care of it it's like no 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 like yeah there's you, a plan it's, so. it's something more fulsome than that i'm not expressing yeah. it great but you guys get what i'm saying so we understand also sister yeah. evangelina's jubilee i love the love love loved the ruse where oh. um, where they were like look these have come dirty and um sister winifred and uh patsy was so amazing at getting that done also i love the fact that sister evangelina's all like trying to clean stuff before patsy does now <laughs> <laughs> 
but she was like uh, oh so this it, like about stuff being it was just so 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 good but also yeah. like they're all like oh I'm one of yours sister and she's like oh, I'm one of yours all queued up outside like 600 of them oh, how did God. they do that before Facebook how did they mobilize that movement in a few days before Facebook Oh, no, no, no. Everybody lives there. Everybody knows everybody. Like, you just go around and say, like, the party's happening, and then everyone just goes there. Like, people Everyone's are not... having their tea on the street this day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, I I mean, I was already crying. I mean, I just... When, when, when she comes out and she sees everyone, and then she goes and she sits on that throne with, like, the 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 garland of flowers and everything and there's all the bunting and stuff and then that first lady coach oh, I remember me sister Evangelina I'm Carol and you delivered me and then this my little baby oh it just oh it just it just made my heart so full for her and I just thought it was the and then everyone gave her like little presents and it was just oh god it was so good, was so good. but also one more thing there's a few more things from this episode but um do you know um I know she's having a horrible time, Jenny Lee, and she's grieving and all this. She got cake in the post. I was amazed by how good that cake, how it was in such good condition for having gone through the post. That was um, not yeah, right. I thought the exact days. same. No crumbles, no nothing. Yeah, it was perfect. She did have a slice missing because of Sister Monica Joan, but still. Uh, I'm amazed it only had a slice missing. I thought it was going to be an empty <laughs> tin when she opened it up. Yeah. I also have to mention the scene where um, when patients mount why am I calling a patient's man when Patsy's arrived and all the girls are in the bedroom um and Trixie's got the hula hoop because she's got a hair brain plan that a hula hoop's gonna help her trim her waist yeah I have done this before and how, and how did it work Bex did it trim your waist I you couldn't do trim even waist. do it well you I have couldn't one. do it I couldn't uh, even do, you know do it do you know what Bex you know who you need to get to teach you to do uh hula hoop who my daughter I went to oh. a play date the other day and she was doing it like amazing. I was like, where did you learn to do that? And she was like, nursery and just carrying on doing it. Like it was no well, big deal. Didn't, didn't she learn how to do a lot of that stuff? And I went to those dance classes with you and her. Remember when yeah, yeah, she yeah. was really little and everything? They were doing yeah. hula hoops in there. Yeah. No, they weren't actually learning hula hoops. Though. They were just jumping around. Oh, and stuff. But oh, she okay. genuinely does it really well for ages. I'm like, how did you? I didn't even well, know this was a skill she not- had. It's not. I mean, like, I good on her that she does it. I'm sure she's an absolute. Yeah, don't star, don't but... play the fact that my five year old's a star. Okay, it, it's not that hard to hula hoop. Sorry. <laughs> well, I think it is. I think it is. Wait, I am dedicating mine to a friend's child. I can't do it. You neither of you can hula hoop. No. no. <gasps> oh my god. I can't believe you don't think hula hooping is uh, hard, that Jen. Like, I'm genuinely think you might need to go in the Olympics or something because. I honestly can't do it. Anyway, that's by the by. This is nothing to do. That, that's that's going to be the new category in the 2026 Olympics. Like it's a summer sport. Um, well, if I'm it is USA you. versus UK, you versus my daughter. Yeah, anyway. yeah, and and I'll disprove the myth about a hula hoop and giving you a trim waist because I've done a lot of hula hooping <laughs> and it hasn't done anything for my waistline. <laughs> <laughs> right now, talking of exercise, um, yes. let's talk about cricket. That's a great segue, Al. Thank you. Oh, Thank look, you. Timothy playing in the street. Uh, also, the fact that it's the summer holidays. He's stuck in with Sheila, Auntie Sheila. Mm. Um, <laughs> I think he's supposed to call her mum now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then poor, he gets dragged along with Dr. Turner on a house call yeah, and told to like sit in the, in the car. car. Yeah. I completely thought everything Tim was saying was like when they were sat at the breakfast table and Tim was saying, like, of issuing all of his objections and everything like that i thought he was completely valid completely fair to have said everything he said and then and i just sheila was completely ignoring him dr turner was completely ignoring him and criticized him for having a bad attitude and i was like he was sarcastic know? but it was not yeah, was. oh i can't yeah, but wait it, yeah but it, oh I, I mean and i get it like tim you know should have good manners and whatever but i was like no 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 tim is exactly right on this front like come on now and i was so glad when Dr. Turner took him on his rounds and said, oh, you wait here, we'll get an ice cream after. And then he went inside and did whatever. And then Tim saw the boys playing and he got out of the car. I was like, yes, Tim, get out of the car. And to be fair to Dr. Play. Turner, he did what he did best, which is leave Tim where he is and ignore him. And go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just leave him to his own devices and he'll do way better by himself than he will with anybody else. But you know what Tim said at the breakfast table? He was like, I want to play with the boys. And they're like, no, they go too fast. And he said, well, they'll slow down for me. Like, yeah. these are my friends. These are the kids that... I played with my whole life. Like they'll, they won't just railroad me out of here, you know. Like to be fair to Mr. Doctor, Mr. Turner, Doctor Turner, he did make the right call. He saw him. He left him. 
Whereas yeah. I don't think Sheila would have done that. Sheila would have, well, they had a big argument at home, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah. and Sheila was like, we both left him to his own devices um, and look what happened. And he was like, I don't deserve that and neither do you. And I thought, mm, that... you kind of do, Dr. Turner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he I definitely love... does. But it was it was a good point. Well made, I thought. I love the scene later on where Jacob visits Nanata's house and he looks over and he just sees them basically hoiking Tim up so he can hang from a lamppost or something. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. That was also No, it's good. It's good. They're kind oh, of just gosh. experimenting with it and playing with it, as, as young boys and girls would do. Oh, yeah. And also, the oh, scene yeah. where Timothy gets his leg braces off, right? It's yeah. dead moving and he's there and he runs towards his dad and it's gorgeous and everything. Yeah. Why is there like an audience of people watching it? Oh, that was so weird. That was yeah. oh, like they literally okay. went behind a curtain to the gate assessment clinic, and then all of a sudden he was literally walking down like a promenade with two rows of people on either side. It made no sense. I wondered if it was like Polio Club, like they're all doing it. Polio Club. Well, not. <laughs> <laughs> sound like polo club like or something yeah. rich people, rich people did. no you know what i mean like people who've got polio who are all doing the same thing because polio was like an epidemic at the time wasn't it so there will be other well, kids did you did you not see that the sign said it was a gate assessment clinic they were assessing well, gate. well or like in a running shop but like they do like it it might have been other kids doing that is my point polio it club, was it. yeah see though so it was it was polio club thank you yeah I, I, I want to make more jokes but I just think I'm going to start laughing and then I'm going to start coughing and it just no one wants to hear that I need to join a coughing club that's what I need to join um so yeah so has anyone got any more point I just want to say another point that I just love Patsy um so much that there's no point to it there's no other thing about it I just think she's a breath of fresh air and I love her she's amazing I love loved Patsy. Patsy when she'd um, basically cleaned everything and then Sister Evangelina has literally got nothing to pick her up on. So she picks her up on the fact that she's wearing her hat indoors when it's strictly for outdoor wear. And she says that she um, she wanted to wear it to make it sure it stayed under in vigorous activity. <laughs> and Sister Evangelina looks so impressed. And then she's like, well, anyone want a cup of tea? Like she was a bit annoyed <laughs> that she was impressed because she's so used to like a default <laughs> position is to just be disapproving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, and then when Patsy was having some drinks with the girls upstairs hula hooping and she has a bottle of whiskey and she says something like, my father always told me it's important to like always go to a new place with something to wet, wet everyone's whistle or whatever, yeah. you know, like, like kind of bring something to kind of get the party started and then you'll, you'll make fast friends and everything. And I just thought, oh, that is, oh man, she just, she just hits, she just hits every note like boop, She's perfect. She's just boss. I just love it. Yeah, and I yeah. totally sympathise with Cynthia because Cynthia basically couldn't keep up with them, and that would be me. <laughs> yeah, she's like, just give me ginger ale. I'm I'm gonzo gals. Like I'm having enough. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Now, shall we do the heroes and zeros of the week? Yes. Now, Jen, have you actually thought of who yours are? Oh, uh, if not, you're going last. Go, make me go last. Sorry. You uh, go first. You want me to go first? Yeah. Okay, my hero of the week is going to be Cynthia. Um, no. I just thought the way she dealt with the whole situation was oh, outstanding. She didn't talk to Sally like she was stupid because she's not stupid. She didn't talk to Sally like she was a lower person or in a condescending way. She just was absolutely fantastic with her, just so gentle and caring and lovely. And she handled it absolutely chef's kiss perfectly. So she is my hero of the week. I think she does that anyway, but this was a particularly difficult one. Um, and she just literally could not have handled it any better, like 10 out of 10. Um, um, oh, oh, I've missed Patsy, though, because she's also my hero week, because I love her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> zero of the week. Now, who is going to be my zero of the week? Do you know what? It's going to be... It was going to be Sally's dad, because he was too hot-headed, but at the same time, he's obviously... That's all he knows what to do. He's a man in the 1950s, like, do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, I think it is going to be... Do you know, there's me being like, have you thought of a hero and a zero? And then <laughs> it's hard. Honestly, there's a lot going on. I I need to decide like in advance, but I never do. It's hard. Okay, I'm gonna say my zero of the week is um St. Mungo's being in Ayrshire. Because I just feel like that is so far away and from mm. anything and any life he knows. Because also Ayrshire is very, very, very different to inner city London. 
Mm. Um, so different. And I just yeah, think he's he's grown up at St Gideon's. Like they've taken him from everything that he knows. Exactly, like every single thing, and even the accents and location, everything. Like I just think it's going to be yeah. so much of a shock and change for him. So I'm going to say St Mungo's, even though it's technically not been in the show. There you go. So my hero of the week is going to be Patsy Mount because she came in when they all needed it. She was whipped them into shape. And I just love Patsy. Same. Amazing. Um, my zero of the week is going to be the fact that Sister Evangelina trampled dog poo around the house. <laughs> Do you know that nearly was mine? <laughs> That's a really good one. Well, I love how I love how Trixie also calls it dog dirt. I I, I smell dog dirt, and it's like okay, yeah, you do. Are we all? And I still cannot, cannot carry on with this meal until the culprit has been caught. Like, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. also the fact that Sister Evangelina is just cleaning her shoes in the sink, which is going to be spraying everywhere. I was just yeah. oh. Yeah, well, and, and Patsy says that you, even like that afternoon or the next day, like I could I could still smell traces of it, so I wasn't sure. So I basically yeah. bleached this whole entire room. So yeah, okay. So I've I've decided what my heroes and zeros are for once and for all while you guys were talking. So my zero is gonna be, and I, though I love her very much, I'm gonna give a Sheila a zero on this one because I she wanted to just keep Tim in like this little you know like box with cotton wool and that just was never going to work and I think part of what's hard is um you know learning how to let a person kind of back out into the world you know be autonomous and everything that even when you want to protect them and that can happen in many different relationships but it often happens with parents and kids because of obvious you know dynamics and I do think Sheila was well-intentioned but Tim had to go out and live and Tim ultimately did what was best for everyone by doing what was best for himself and just loved him. And I know she learned her lesson, but she got a zero for just thinking that she could kind of, you know, trap Tim next to her side for the whole summer and who knows how much longer. And so I'm glad that that didn't happen, but she gets a zero mini zero. Okay. My hero is, um, sister Evangelina and the Jubilee party where, you got to see all the people coming up and telling her, like, thank you for giving me life. Thank you for bringing me into this world. It was so beautiful. And, like, it was so rich, that scene, because she had said that from, like, a very young age, like, from a little girl, that was the ultimate thing she wanted to do with her life was help newborn babies come into this world and it was like the thing that mattered the most to her the thing that she was most devoted to and she'd had a chance to do that not just with so many people but with generations of people in this community and serving the people who needed her, her most and um I just thought not only was it just great but like also the ability of the of Nanata's house and the nuns and the midwives to give her the party not just that like she deserved but that she could really enjoy you know like sometimes yeah. we don't celebrate people in the way that they really want to be celebrated and she got the exact kind of celebration that was perfect for her and so it just came together in this beautiful way and I just loved the bunting and I loved all the little babies and I loved all the little bouquets she got and I loved that she got a new pair of shoes and like on and on and on and it was just so beautiful and I'm I just loved it now, just really quick, your zero made me think, made me think um, about the episode. It's made me feel like the, the writers were doing some subliminal uh, messaging here, like the mm. dichotomy of parenting, because you've got Sheila being too overprotective over Timothy, but then mm -hmm. you've got Sally's mum feeling like she wasn't protective enough over her. Oh. And it's just come to me now, like the duality of this storyline, how the writers have got both sides going on. Yeah. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that really quick because uh, I think that is exactly what they were doing and we all missed it until just now. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't even put <laughs> well, it you up. said it. Yeah. Like, how yeah. much can you let your loved one out into the world without... Yeah, without you know, them getting pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> or falling over and hurting themselves again. <laughs> yeah. Or them learning oh. the hula hoop without you oh. knowing. 
Yeah. And you know what? Some some people can have all the time in the world to learn the hula hoop, and it's just never going to happen. <laughs> That's me and you, Bex. By the time we yeah. see it, Bex, next, we're going to have to like do it. Yeah. When we're when we're in person, we'll have to have a little hula hoop time. Party. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can do you can do hula hoops around your arms. You can do hula hoops around your neck. You can do. Hula I can do it on my arms. It's me waist. I can't do it. Yeah. Oh the- yeah. It's just that rhythm. You guys, I guess, don't have as much rhythm. All right. Ooh, cutting. <laughs> we'll work on it, though. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Shots fired. Oh, my goodness. Right, on that note. Yes. Um, right, well, uh, thank you very, very much for listening, everyone, if you're up to this point. Um, I hope you can hula hoop. Um, and uh, just to say, we've got our brand Whether new you YouTube you can channel. Hula hoop or not, we love everybody. Hula yeah, hoop you, you, you're allowed to listen no. hula hoop or not. Like you know, it's both abilities here as well. Yes, exactly. Uh, but yeah, but no, we've got a brand new YouTube channel. It's got every single one of our episodes on, <gasps> and from now on, every single episode is going to be uploaded the same time as it's uploaded online as well. Every week, every Sunday. And listeners, well done, that that's all down to Alex. Thank you. Thank you. I may not be able to hula hoop. But I can. <laughs> you can sort do so YouTube many channel. other wonderful things. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, subscribe if you can. Give us some reviews. Um, like us on Facebook. Like us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Um, yeah, it'd be amazing. We love all your feedback. Honestly, I can't tell you how much I love all the feedback and everything on social media. Because it, again, it's me yeah. on social media. But I just keep having all these amazing interactions with you all, and you're all sending us the most gorgeous messages. So thank you so so much. But- Honestly, it makes my life. But all of us go and look, and then Alex shares a lot of it with us, and we all see it. All three of us see it, and we all love it, and we all just think all of you are the most amazing and wonderful people. Hula hoopers or not. Yes, exactly. We are a completely <laughs> hula hoop inclusive environment. All hula hoop levels are welcome. Yes. Right, we're not going to mention hula hoop ever again. Right, no. so. <laughs> Done now. Over kill. So yeah, but thank you so much for listening. Next week, um, we will be watching series three, episode six. So, mm-hmm. thank you so much. And who knows what, what random thing that's not even really seemingly that, that important an episode we'll bring up and talk about ad nauseum. So yeah, it's always <laughs> exciting to see. <laughs> okay, thanks for listening. Okay, see you bye. next week. Bye bye.